Welcome to our talk on ML-based bandwidth estimation and congestion control for RTC. I am Sundar Sundar Rajan. I am a tech lead at Meta for ML networking projects. I will be co-presenting this talk with Elian, an ML lead for ML networking projects at Meta. In this talk, we will talk in detail about how we achieved quality and reliability gains using ML-based solution by targeting different network types. Back in 2021, we rolled out sensor bandwidth estimation improvements with quality gains for high bandwidth network. But we saw reliability regressions in low bandwidth networks. Similarly, in 2021, we had another rollout for congestion pushback window with gains in reliability for low bandwidth networks. But it had lots of regression in quality. In early in 2022, we found the need for optimizing different networks by network types. So thus, we wanted to formulate a solution based on ML. Here is the agenda for the talk. First, we will briefly introduce a couple of project topics for network characterization and network prediction. And then we will discuss in detail about challenges that we faced in developing these ML-based solutions. And then we will leave some takeaways and future plan for how we want to improve this project. Before we get into the details, let's look at the current bandwidth estimation algorithm. The current bandwidth estimation algorithm is based on Google's congestion controller. It is from WebRTC. It's a sensor bandwidth estimation algorithm. That means the bandwidth is estimated based on the feedback received from the receiver side. It consists of several modules like loss-based BWE, delay-based BWE, congestion pushback window. Here, you could see multiple sub-modules and how they use the information from the receiver that it received. As you could see, these sub-modules have lots of parameters within them and these parameters are tuned based on the network conditions. For example, in high bandwidth conditions, we want to ramp up really faster. Whereas in low bandwidth conditions, we want to ramp down really faster. So with these different network conditions, we have different parameters. And what we found with the existing approach is that it took lots of uh, tuning on production. For example, we don't have good network scenarios for offline simulations. Thus, this resulted in multiple experiment iterations. And even after the experiment is done and rolled out, it is not clear if the optimal parameters are still applicable. For example, the users might have given up their old devices and moved on to new devices or new learned networks. It may not be applicable anymore, the optimization that we rolled out in the past. And also, as you could see, the system diagram itself was really complex. If you add more parameters to those, it, is, it has become a complex code logic for us to maintain. And it has lots of branches in them. Therefore, we wanted to formulate a solution based on ML. So ML gave us a cleaner alternative to anti nules. But only point that we need to note down is we need to have a sufficient post validation so that ML model doesn't give you results that is not reasonable. And also ML models gave us a holistic approach to take network actions across multiple subsystems, such as bandwidth estimator, network resiliency, and transport. This gives us a good overall strategy for tackling different network conditions and what kind of optimization we want to do cross stack. Next, I will hand off this talk to Leah to talk in detail about network characterization, where she will talk about ML problem formulation, how we achieved good results for random packet loss. Thanks, Santosh. Hello, everybody. My name is Leah. I'm ML lead in Meta. So since Santosh has talked about why ML base is a better approach than hand-tuned rules. So I'll be talking about how we use ML-based approach to solve network characterization problems. So this slide defines what is a network characterization. So we have two endpoints. These two endpoints could be a desktop or a mobile device or with network devices. So in this example, we are showing a P2P connection. The offline tuned PWE optimal parameters are stored on the server side, while online inference is done on client side. So this slide talks about offline model learning and offline parameter tuning. So we leverage time series logs of network conditions in the past as the training samples. We use time series data because network signals are time-varying and time-sensitive. So the aggregated metrics 
cannot fully capture the full characteristic of the network and the dynamic of the network. These time series logs could be simulated network conditions or production logs. We also developed an internal tool called FB Learner Workflow for model training using PyTorch. We also built up a client-side model deployment infer and inference pipeline on the client side. For offline tuning, we use simulation to run network profiles for the detected types, and then we will choose the optimal parameters for the modules based on metrics improvement. For the metrics, some, for example, we can use video quality or video freeze. So for the model architecture, since we are training on both time series data and non-time series data, we build a model architecture that could take input for both time series data and non-time series data. So for the time series data, we will pass through a LSTM layer, which is a long short term memory layer that will convert the time series input into a vector representation. For the non-time series data, we will be directly passing through a fully connected layer. So then the two vectors will be concatenated together to fully represent the network conditions in the past. And then we will be passing through another fully connected layer. The final output from the neural network model will be the predicted output of the target variable. So in this slide, we will be talking about random pack loss classification and use this as an example of how we do network characterization. So the objective is that at current timestamp, if we see a packet loss, we want to characterize the current random packet loss as random or not based on the past n seconds network conditions. So for the model training, we will use time series data as input and it will be passing through neural network layers like LSTM layer that we mentioned. And then we can get the vector representation of it. And then it will be passing through a classifier and then the output will be the predicted probability of target variable. In this example, that will be the predicted probability of being a random packet loss. So we mainly use low-level features for BWE ML projects. So these low-level features can be collected at 100 millisecond or 500 milliseconds or one second time intervals. And these can be collected during production calls. The features include packet loss rate, round trip time with different evaluation types, and the jitter and the congestion window pushback. So these time series are usually collected in the past 10 to 30 seconds for our characterization work. So for this time series, we can also use feature engineering to extract and aggregate more powerful features to be directly used for the model. So this slide highlights different optimizations that we could use when the random packet loss is detected. For example, we will increase the tolerance to random packet loss in loss-based BWE. We can also ignore congestion signals in high bandwidth. We can also scale network resiliences. So this part talks about network characterization. So next, Santosh will be talking about network prediction. Thank you, Lian, for introducing the network characterization topic. Now let's go into network prediction. From Lian's introduction for network characterization, we know that network characterization only looks at the pass window for, say, for example, 30 seconds or 10 seconds to characterize networks into different types. One may ask, why do we need ML-based solution if we can characterize network based on simple untuned rules? 
One of the advantages of using ML-based solution is it can find out a dependency between multiple variables when we characterize networks. For example, it can find dependency between round trip time, that is RTT, packet loss, and then jitter. So during our execution, we found that it will be even more interesting and also very valuable for our product if we apply ML-based solution for network prediction. What we mean by network prediction is, given the past network conditions, can we predict the future network conditions? So that's what the rest of the talk about network prediction would be. So we felt the power of ML is further amplified if we use uh, the ML-based solution for predicting future network conditions. Let's go in deeper into a problem for predicting condition. First, I will start with introducing the problem statement. Given the historical time series data from production or simulation for n seconds, the goal is to predict the packet loss due to condition or the packet loss itself in the next n seconds. That is a spike in RTT followed by a packet loss or a further growth in RTT. So this covers both shallow and the deep buffers. That is, the shallow buffer causes packet loss when we incur congestion, and deep buffers cause increase in RTT when we incur congestion. Let's take a simulated example that we present below with the call type. Here is a simulated network condition which alternates bandwidth every 30 seconds. It drops from high bandwidth like 500 kbps to 50 kbps every 30 seconds. As you could see, when the bandwidth drops, we see an increase in RTT right when it incurs congestion. And then it also sometimes incurs packet loss depending on the queue size. And we show our network prediction output in green that shows predicting the condition well before the condition happens based on our model training. The main challenge with condition prediction is how do we go about labeling? The labeling is one of the important aspects of ML-based modeling. So either we could use ground truth from simulations or we could use ground truth from production. The challenge with using simulation is can we get all the different types of network scenarios within simulation and what the different distributions of congestion. So what we did is we used production for labeling our ground truth samples. So we have n seconds of time window in past and future. In our labeling, we use four seconds time window for past and future with the time series log and we label congestion according to this big chart that we put up here. So to simplify this chart, we want to find out what are the positive and negative samples here. We look for RTT spike in the past and RTT growth in the future. Similarly, we look for packet loss in the past and packet loss in the future. To give you a simple example where we label positive examples, we look for RTT spike in the past and if it results in the packet loss in the future, we strongly label this as positive example. And also, we look for RTT spike in the past and if it results in further growth in RTT in the future, we label them as positive examples. So this is how we label the supervised model for predicting congestion using our ML approach. Once the model is trained, we evaluated the model on the test set using our uh, performance metrics like F1 score, AUC, precision, and recall. We predicted congestion for 5.5 percentage of our cases in our offline test using the congestion model. We also logged the ground truth for the model inference on the client side. What we did is, based on the past prediction, in the future window, we have the ground truth, whether the condition has occurred or not. We log that ground truth from our ML inference on the client, and we compare that with the offline. So as we could see from this chart or the table here, the predicted congestion percentages for both offline and online evaluation are similar, and also we achieved a similar scores for AUC, precision, and recall. That tells you that the model is able to predict congestion and closely as similar to the offline training. Once the congestion is predicted, we apply certain optimization similar to what Leanne mentioned for random packet loss. For example, in predicting congestion, we trigger more overuse. The overuse causes bandwidth to drop, so we are able to like not congest more on the network. Similarly, we augment congestion signal to the existing congestion detector in the loss-based BWE module. And as I mentioned earlier in the talk, how do we do a holistic approach for bandwidth estimation and transport network resiliency? This is one example where we scale the network resiliency when we predict the congestion by sending more forward error packets. Finally, these are the results that we achieved by conducting our experiments on public clients. 
So our ML models are actually with BW optimizations are launched in both Messenger and WhatsApp. And the congestion prediction model needed reliability wins. We saw like a video freeze percentage increase by 2%. And similarly, for random packet loss, the model yielded the quality gains of 3.4% and the user engagement wins like talk time increase by 0.15%. So initially, if you remember from our talk, we wanted to address both reliability and quality gains by optimizing our ML-based solution for different network types. And that's what we achieved with this. Now I will hand off to Leanne to talk about conclusions and takeaways and finish this talk. Thank you, Santosh, for talking about network predictions. So with that, I will be talking about conclusions and the main takeaways from this talk. So from the explanation for network correlation and the network prediction, we can see that ML-based approach is more efficient than traditional hand-turned rules for network targeting, monitoring, and updating. We can also see that the efficiency of ML-based solution heavily relies on data quality and the ground truth labeling. So if we can have a better data quality either from simulated data or production data, and we have a, if we can have a better ground truth labeling strategy, we can have better ML-based models. So ML's power is amplified by using it for model prediction problems, and it can also be automatically learning network actions. So currently, we are still exploring new areas for ML-based approach for network optimizations. So we have a few future plans and currently, we are exploring on these plans. So first, we are planning to develop and deploy more ML models for various applications. There is a need to design a generalized ML model for multi-task architectures. We are trying to build a backbone model, which takes the network conditions in the past as the input and generate a representation of the network conditions. This network representation will be used to the downstream tasks for specific BWE optimizations and applications. And each downstream task will have its own target. So this generalized model architecture will greatly increase model scalability and reduce the model complexity for both offline and online. Secondly, so currently we are focusing on capturing network patterns within a short-term window for from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. But it is also very important to capture long-term network patterns in the network. So our future plan also includes explorations of how to model long-term network patterns in the model prediction. Thirdly, we also plan to improve our simulation scenarios to build more realistic production-like network scenarios. We could even leverage GenAI to train generative models to generate more production-like network scenarios to reduce the gap between production and the simulation. Last but not the least, our long-term goal is to use reinforcement learning to model BWE dynamic, dynamically online instead of current strategy that we learned model ML model offline and then we, we apply the model online. So we will first work on how to come up with a good theoretical formulation of the model and a good reward function. And then we will apply our reinforcement learning onto our simulations based network scenarios. Our ulti ultimate long-term goal is to replace current network based algorithm using reinforcement learning. So with that, we conclude our today's presentation. And thank you.